What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, uh, we finally got a glimpse of a in-camera shot, specifically of what Superman is going to look like, kind of, for Superman. The shot makes you look and investigate uh, Sherlock Holmes uh, brain on doing deduction and, and looking at every little detail. But my initial thoughts was uh, it reminded me a bit uh, like if there was another Homelander, that would be him. You know what I'm saying? Like if, if Homelander was introduced as him, he would probably look like he looks like Brian, a roughed up like he's on it type of situation that he has no time to really sort of relax. He's like, you know, going back to work, going back out there. Your thoughts on, on the uh, initial, the first shot of Superman? Uh, a lot to cover. I think this image has been really divisive. So I, let's try to hit also some of the things that other fans have latched onto for better or for worse. Uh, I think the first thing to say at the top is James Gunn does nothing by accident. Yeah. So the first thing is when I look at this picture, I say this is exactly the frame he wanted the world to see first. So I try to put myself actually in his shoes to say, well, what is he actually wanting you to see? And then we can talk about like, what did we like? I had kind of a mixed reaction to it. There's some things about the shot I thought were very interesting. There's a couple of things about the shot that I have questions, like, I, you know, but it is a first shot. I'm not surprised at all that it's not an action shot. I would have been actually stunned. <laughs> Like, you know how Zach's, the Man of Steel first shot was Superman in the, in the Smallville fight getting thrown against the vault in the yes. bank? That's the, an action shot. He's in the middle of a fight. In the same way that I would every bit expect Zack Snyder's first shot of Superman to be an action shot, I would have been shocked if James Gunn's first shot would have been mm -hmm. Superman in the middle of, a, in the middle of combat. My first reaction was that David Cornsweet looks older as Superman than I thought he would. Yeah. He this looks like a pretty seasoned Superman. Like just the way his jaw is cut and his face. Like I I know it wasn't Superman year one, but I thought it was supposed to be pretty young, like younger Superman. And he kind of does it. He looks or he looks like he's been through it, been through the wars a few times. I was pretty surprised at that. Because the actor doesn't look that old. In every shot we've seen, especially now that he's shaved the beard, and he is ripped. Like, he's a like cavil ripped, to his credit. Brian, I'll say this, because I've been thinking about um, when I saw the, the shot of him at, at the gym in his T-shirt. And I said to myself, Zack Snyder wanted his Superman to be strong. This is what he meant. <laughs> He's every bit as ripped as Cavill was. I think he's, I and think he's, he's six foot four, whereas Cavill's six foot. Six I think he's one. bigger and just more, much more defined. So, I was a little surprised to see that in in when the hair is done and the costume is on that he 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 looks older than I think his twenty nine or thirty years that the actor is. That was just my first first thought. Mixed on the suit. But I'm okay with it. I don't stress as much about the suit. You give me a good movie, the suit is whatever. Yeah. Sorry, I don't know if that's a controversial take or not. Yeah, it was because, like, re honestly, like Christopher Reeve's suit coming yeah, out now is, is yeah, 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 yeah. You could buy that at your local store for Halloween. Yeah. The fabric they had him in. I wasn't. I was a little surprised to see a collar. I was a little surprised to see how rubber it looked. Like it looked like a uniform, a little yeah, bit yeah, more yeah, than a yeah. super suit. But. Yeah. That's just an observation. It was just a reaction. And I, I have to say, I did like the fact that it was kind of beaten up a little bit. I kind of like the fact that the suit took some damage from yeah. something. Yeah. I appreciated that and thought it was Gunn's way of saying, yeah, this might be an all-American story, but there's still some grit to this, still some grit and grind to this. And I kind of like that. So I like that part of it. 
I don't care either way about the shorts. I gotta be honest. I know that's a big thing for the fans and they, they're like, oh, their shorts are back and then they don't like this. I don't care either way, it's fine. I've lived with both. Yeah. Again, go watch Superman 1978, right? That's when it came out. And it's like, the suit is like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not the suit that makes the movie. Like, so, yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter, really. I mean, you would like to see certainly something different. It can't be that, right? It, it, but certainly something different. And uh, none of what comes out, Brian, is going to deter me, deter my excitement for the movie when I actually am in, in, in the theaters and waiting to see this movie come up on screen. Totally agree. So the costume for me is not make or break. Some fans are hung up on it. Let me ask you a question. Because this is a theory that's been floated. Do you believe the shot we're seeing is actually occurring at super speed? Meaning you are only seeing him put on his boot because it's a super slow-mo of him putting on his boot you know, at super speed and he's about to go deal with whatever's outside the window. Because I've seen people saying, oh, wait a minute, why is he so slow? Why is he only getting ready now when the disaster's <laughs> already in the sky? Do you believe what we're seeing is actually happening at, at Superman's top speed? I'm gonna put that that shot of Superman 3. Oh, we got time. Let's have a, let's have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. That's great. <laughs> I mean, hey, if that's the if that is the case, fantastic, right? I'm not theorizing which way or another. It's just a shot in camera. This may not be something that we actually see in the. They just wanted to show us something. He wanted to be specific about what he's showing you. So it has people talking, which is fine. Which is the point, Brian. So, uh, yeah, I mean, again, I'm torn a bit, but again, it's not the mo the, 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 the curiosity and excitement is not, has, has not diminished. I do think there is the pose, the putting on of the boot, the weathering of the suit. There is a little bit of a blue collar messaging in there. There's a little bit of a, Certainly. he's not above the people. He's of the people and there. I don't think that's an accident. Be and I think that's an interesting contrast to Zack Snyder's very purposeful, these are gods presiding over people. Right? That's a take. I'm not criticizing Zack's take right now. I'm just yes. saying that was a thesis he carried through all of his films. Yeah. And James Gunn's, this picture to me is very much the opposite. This is kind of saying Superman's one of us. He's just in an apartment he's like everyone else. He's just getting ready like to do his job else. like everyone else. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is his job. Uh, and he likes to do it. And sometimes it's rough. Sometimes, you know, whatever. But uh, it is what it is. And it's, it's a passion and joy of his. And he just has a, a perspective of responsibility, Say, uh, I would say. Uh, uh, is that Brainiac, Brian? No. I think the prevailing wisdom based on the appearance is that it's Solaris, the tyrant's son. Because it looks... If you look closely, you can kind of see what looks to be the eye inside the flaming ball. And that would match um, a secondary villain that was used in All-Star Superman, incidentally, which is obviously we know uh, one of the leading inspirations for this. It's something that Lex actually called on to help him defeat Superman in that story. Uh, and I think that gets into... You know, I don't expect James Gunn is going all the way with that story. That story ultimately led with, spoiler alert, Superman's demise. I, Superman's not dying in this movie. Spoiler, yeah. I, I'd be stunned if they played that card. But wouldn't shock me if, because they wanted to do something different. You know, and honestly, you could probably, maybe some fans would consider it sacrilegious. You could probably connect Solaris to Brainiac if you wanted. People haven't, people have no baggage with that idea. But the idea was that Lex called down this kind of planet eating being to help him destroy Superman. And then the in All-Star Superman, um, Solaris basically blots out the sun. He turns the sun blue and that deprives Superman of his powers. Um, and then he basically enrages Superman. Superman's able to destroy him before kind of sacrificing himself. 
Um, I think in that story, actually, Lex winds up being endowed with superpowers as well. So there is also that angle to watch out for, which Nicholas Holt, remember, kind of teased that he was physically getting ready, not just mentally for the part. So maybe there's a little bit of hint that Lex might be souped up at some point in this. But I think it's that, not, not Brainiac. Although I have to say, Solaris, I, I don't know if you had this reaction, was the source of my number one dislike of the shot. And maybe it's my emotional scarring with Marvel VFX these days. But I didn't like the color palette. It, it reminded me too much of Guardians. It reminded me too much. Of, like, Marvel loves purple, man. There's a lot of purple. And if you look at, like, the backdrops in space and cosmic, they like to the feature purple. And when I saw purple in this, I kind of was like, eh. It looks kind of similar to, like, that Guardians aesthetic. And I was kind of that. Again, is a, maybe an overreaction, but I just saying what my knee jerk was when I first saw it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I looked at it, Brian, and I'm like, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Because it's just, it's too early, and Gun is, he's just, he did that for a reason, and it's not for for us to be like, wow, look at that. I'm sure it wasn't for any of that. So I, I, I'm I'm not judging any of what. Was was shown in that 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 photo. Uh, I'm taking it for what it is. It was a shot, and there's some interesting things to note. Uh, none of which is either so disappointing, and none of it which is so exciting either. So, do you think that's a problem? Because I've read that take, the take that this photo, while divisive, is neither so overwhelmingly positive that everyone is buzzing about it like that. And neither is it so controversial or so negative that everyone's buzzing about it like that. Do you think it's a problem that it is kind of like something for everyone in the middle? No, because I think Gunn, if I'm not mistaken, and this is why, you know, he's very calculating. I think Gunn is setting expectations very low, Brian, until we get that trader to get it, get us hype. Uh, I think people came out, Brian, for the Batman because of that trailer and how fantastic it was. I think this has to have that same effect, right? So... I would agree with that. I think the aesthetic and the mood of the Batman was set from the very first teaser. And it did get people's attention that something was different. Yes. So I would agree with you. There's an opportunity with Superman to do the same whenever we see the first footage. And maybe you're right. Maybe the maybe the smart move is to show the weaker, almost well, not the weaker, but show parts of the hand that are not the strongest parts yeah. of the feature to keep people kind of restrained a little bit. Yeah. 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 But I have no doubt he put, if it is Solaris, I have no doubt he put that outside the window so people would ask some questions. Certainly. He loves the he loves the nerd culture, right? He wants them digging in the yes. photo, right? He, has to, he wants that because then he of will course. engage with them on socials, right? That's part of his marketing ploy for the film. Yeah, yeah. So. The state of the WB, Brian. That might have been out. Actually, that might have been outside the window. <laughs> Maybe that was Turmoil Superman suiting up and to go scream to WB. <laughs> but it's nothing new, Brian. Turmoil and chaos is nothing new to the WB. The type of turmoil and chaos, though, what is it? It's not even turmoil and chaos. It's, I would just say it's the clock. I think Zaslav's running out of time. Um, you know, th this stock is down two thirds, basically, since the deal was done. The debt load is still really high. I would bet interest rates are probably higher than he thought they were going to be when he took the job. WB is struggling with cash. Uh, and the latest display, which I will reflect back to you and just kind of was like a, huh, mm -hmm. is this streaming bundle. So who is now in bed together? Well, Max and Disney are going to be paired up in a streaming bundle yet to be priced, but all for one price in the next couple of months because Max is having a devil of a time getting growth, um, getting subscribers, the price point's really high. So now instead of totally gutting the price point, he's glomming on to Disney of all people, which means, 
Hmm, Pablo. Marvel and DC in the same streaming bundle. Eh, interesting. Just pointing it out. But this speaks to me that Superman is the only movie that is assured. Even Supergirl, which I do think will go into production and will get made, it all, as we've said all along, this is the movie that has to hit and hit big. They have to make money. Now, big doesn't mean a billion, three, a billion, four. Big means profitable big. Big means like if they keep the budgeting and the marketing, say to like 250 all in, like this thing's got to do 700. This thing has to be a hit because they are running out of time and they are running out of cash relative to their debt. That just seems to be the reality. And the stock is down at seven, seven fifty. There's a lot of fears unrelated that they're going to lose their NBA streaming deal with Turner, which would also be a big blow. They're in trouble. And the sharks are circling to buy this or buy parts of it. So that's what I mean by it's not necessarily chaos this time. It is literally just time is against him. And he he might need Superman to reverse <laughs> the earth to, to save I'm him. I'm at this point in thinking that Zaslov that no matter what Zaslov at some point will sell this IP he is true once Superman and perhaps a couple of other movies have shown that uh, box office power box office potential Box office possibility based on already what we've seen with what Marvel can do. Now we're trying to replicate it here, and so far we're off to a good start. It, look, how I mean, much? Yeah, no, I, I I don't disagree with the premise. I mean, clearly there will be interest for the entire thing, but it's still, if not the most valuable thing he owns, in the top two or three. I mean, I guess you can make case for Harry Potter. Maybe make a case for Lord of the Rings. I'd say it's DC, though, because you get animated, you get live action, and you get theatrical. You know, look, we'll have a different show about Cape Crusader in, in a bit, but the bundle deal, having Cape Crusader at Amazon, yeah, like obviously in a perfect world, if they were dealing from a position of strength, all of that would be on Max and all of that would be on HBO. But you could see the philosophy. The philosophy is a piece of something that's a hit is better than nothing. And that's what's going on. That's why he's partnering all over the place. That's why you can see DC stuff on Netflix. That's why you see DC. <laughs> it's everywhere because he wants the eyeballs on the IP with the idea that if I can get 30%, whatever his cut is from those deals, I need that money yeah. now. Yeah, he's testing the waters. He's testing to see what the possibilities can be and what, pri and what asking price he will be asking for, for it when that day does come. Because it will come, I think. I think the only question is, does he chop the entity up, right? Does he make DCIP it's an asset to sell? Does he make Harry Potter an asset to sell versus saying, I want to sell the whole thing, debt and all? That's the only question to me. Yeah, I would be sad if it's like somebody wanted to buy the, own, the, the Batman for IP alone. You know what I'm saying? That, that would be disappointing. That would be like, that's it. Uh, but yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the Superman photo that came out recently. Sorry, we haven't been on, you know, work, but um, we're going to try to get back on the schedule. But uh, let us know what you thought of that uh, Superman photo. And if you have been watching this show for as long as we've been on, I have been saying ever since Zaslav came on on board i think it was a summer day brian <laughs> it's looking like the momentum is building towards that let us know in the comments below if you believe this to be the case is zaslav are you crazy zaslav will never get rid of dc right there's just too much possibilities there that he wants to take advantage of or zaslav doesn't give a damn really and he just wants that money as you can see, he has no problem showing it on Netflix. Any, all these other streaming flat platforms already having what Matt, correct? Yeah, because it, again, yeah, it's like the subscriber <clears throat> base of those platforms is much bigger than Max, and Max is not growing that much statistically. That is, 
the writing's on the wall. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think, and we'll see you next time on the Nigerian Report. The show goes on! Yeah!